seeking to revolt, my brethren. Too long have our emails been slaves to big business. Too long have these internet companies used them as leverage to make money. Shall we continue this march toward digital captivity? I say nay. I say revolt. Let us take up arms and raspberry pies and build our own email servers. Now that I've got you all hyped up about email servers, which honestly sounds kind of ridiculous, here's what you're gonna need to make your own. You're gonna need a dedicated Linux computer. I'll be using this Raspberry Pi computer because it's cheap, small, uses very little power, and caters to my urge of being an uber nerd. So if you're following along, get your apron on because it's time to make a Raspberry Pi. You'll need one parts Raspberry Pi, one parts SD card, a monitor, mouse, keyboard, a sprinkle of power, and a dash of internet. On this website, you'll find a download for the Raspbian operating system and instructions on how to install it onto your SD card. Run the program, choose your image and SD card drive letter, and then let it simmer. Once it's done, you can take it and put it in the Pi. Then take your keyboard and mouse and put them in the Pi. Take a monitor, put it in the Pi. Add your sprinkle of internet and a dash of power and you should see the fruits of your labor on the screen. Before we move on, let's give our Raspberry Pi a static IP address so that we can remotely access it easier. So hover over your internet icon and remember the IP address that it gives you. Yours will probably be different than mine. Then right click on it and select Wi-Fi settings. Choose ETHO and in this field type the first three number sets from the IP address that I just asked you to remember. For the last number, set it to a unique number that no other device on your network has. Then reboot your Pi and we're done. Okay, moving on. As with all good Linux tutorials, the fastest way to get things done is through the command line. So open it up and let's update the software repositories. Because our email program defaults to using the IPv6 protocol, we're gonna to need to initialize that. There are several options for email programs that we can use, but I'm gonna be going with the Citadel suite because it's easiest for beginners. As the program installs, it should lead you to this screen. Use these defaults and then select OK. For our purposes, internal is a good authentication method. And then set an administrative username and create and confirm a password for it. Since this is gonna be a dedicated email server, select internal for this option and leave the web port and SSL ports as their defaults. Then select your language and let it do its thing. When it's done, you can start the program by typing this. Then open up a web browser and type in your Pi's IP address. And this is the screen that you wanna see. Success. All right, now using your credentials, go ahead and log in. Hmm. Okay, maybe not a success. As I mentioned earlier, Citadel defaults to the IPv6 protocol, but we're gonna need to set it to the IPv4 protocol before it can operate correctly. So let's fix it. Follow me. Type in this command prompt and it's gonna run you through setup again. Again, make a username and password, leave this as default, and now let's set this to 0, .0, 0.0.0.0 to bind Citadel to the IPv4 protocol. Then the rest of the screens can just be left at their default. All right, now restart the Citadel services and try to log in again. Gorgeous. It's got email, contacts, calendars, notes, tasks, and even a chat program but we're only focused on the email program right now. If you were to go ahead and write something and try to send it as an email, it wouldn't go anywhere. Basically, at the moment, we just have a mailbox in need of a delivery truck to route it properly. So let's go ahead and configure that routing truck, shall we? Under Administration and Edit Site-Wide Settings, you'll see a bunch of different tabs. These are the different email routing protocols. For this tutorial, we're only gonna work with a simple mail transfer protocol. Here you have the three port numbers that the SMTP protocol could use to route your mail through. So we need to make sure these ports are open all the way to the internet. So the first stop is your home router, which most of us probably connect to the internet through. So to get to it, type in your base IP address from before, and then most routers IP addresses end in one. Now enter in your credentials, and if you don't have them, you could try the router's default credentials, which you can find here. If it's not your router, make sure you have permission to get into it first. I ain't raising no heathens. 
What we're looking for is the port forwarding option that most routers have. Where you find it, however, is entirely based upon your brand of router. But once you do find it, type in your Pi's IP address followed by the port numbers that you want to route to. And don't forget to also add one for your webmail interface, which is port 80. This will ensure that any traffic sent to these ports will then be routed directly to your email server's IP address. At this point, our email should then be able to get out into the web where things are then routed by a DNS or domain name service. In an email address, this is what's to the right of the at symbol. Normally you have to pay for a domain name to point to your server's IP address, but I'm a cheapskate. If you mosey on over to noip.com, you'll see that they offer a free dynamic DNS option. You can pick a host name and then select your base domain name. And then when managing your host name, make the host type DNS host A, and then type in your main IP address, which you can find by going to cmyip.com. Now save it, and any traffic that goes to that domain name should now be forwarded through your router to your email server. Just about there. Stay with me, guys. With our new dynamic domain name, go back to the Citadel administration settings and domain names and internet mail configuration. Under local host aliases, type in the new DNS that you created at noip.com and click add. Click on administration again and this time select edit site wide administration. Remove the node name and add your domain name to the fully qualified domain name text box. Then save those changes, go back to the administration one more time and restart your server. Now it's time to test it out. You should be able to send and receive email to anyone from your own homemade email server. One thing to note is that nine out of 10 times your email will probably get filtered into spam. So just let your recipient know and have them add you to their safe senders list. Now from here, you can add more stuff to your email server like spam filters, blacklist, new user registration, and tons of other features. But I'll save that for another tutorial. Don't forget to check out the project page for more details on how to make this project. And let me know what idea you'd like me to cover next. Submit or vote for your favorites at tinkernut.com ideas. Click here to watch my last video. And if you'd like to support my show, please feel free to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, or donate at tinkernut.com donate. All right, that's it for this tutorial. For more, go to tinkernut.com.